Join best-selling cookbook author Rose Levy Berenbaum as she explores Little India and prepares her favorite recipe for tandoori chicken. It's all coming up next on Rose's Melting Pot. Major funding for Rose's Melting Pot has been provided by the New Jersey Division of Travel and Tourism. Food is my window on the world. While many people think about beautiful places to stay and visit when they travel, my thoughts are of restaurants, food markets, and kitchen supply stores. As a cookbook author, I've journeyed to 17 countries in search of the most delectable recipes. The memories of my trips that I hold most dear are of special meals shared with newfound friends. In fact, I believe food is one of the best ways to connect with the many cultures of the world. Hi, I'm Rose Levy Berenbaum. Join me now as we take a passage to India without ever leaving the Garden State. India has always fascinated me. Imagine a place one-third the size of the United States that is home to nearly a billion people, roughly one-sixth of the world's population. This magical and mysterious country is now the world's largest democracy a place where more than a thousand languages and dialects are spoken. Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Buddhists, and Christians all live in the vast subcontinent of Asia. This ancient melting pot stretches from the snow-capped Himalayan peaks in the north to the palm tree-lined beaches of the south. I once spent a month in India and never wanted to leave. Now that I'm back home, I can still experience the delights of that exotic wonderland by a much shorter trip to Little India. Little India developed in the neighboring towns of Islin and Edison, New Jersey. This area now has one of the highest concentrations of people from South Asia found anywhere in America. Oak Tree Road is famous for its fine shops filled with traditional jewelry, food, and clothing. This special place attracts Indians from all over the East Coast and beyond. They journey here from afar to experience the sights and sounds of home. People come from Washington, D.C., people come from Pennsylvania, uh, Boston, Connecticut, you know, from all over. When you're away from your country, you miss your own culture and stuff. I came to New Jersey uh, and I saw that there's a very good uh, you know, unity in a community and a lot of activities goes on and and I felt, you know, I will I, I will have better life in New Jersey. I mean, I will enjoy more staying in states, you know, because you have a, both the culture, the Indian and the Western. Dolly Patel opened her designer dress shop, Kijana, in 1992. The name literally means treasure box and features haute couture designs of India. I get them made exclusively for my boutique, so, you know, I would deliver the, the top-line designer clothes to a community in America. Rose, these are the wedding outfits which I wanted to show you. This is a typical wedding outfit is being used in India. Oh my God, Dolly, these are just amazing. This is embroidery. It's very, very pretty. It's all hand embroidery done on silk. In each outfit is one of a kind, so, you know, whatever embroidery you see, you'll never see it again. With designs like these, who could resist? There are more than 50 shops in Little India. This is the place to go if you've always wanted to cook Indian food but could never find the large variety of spices and fresh herbs needed for a lot of the recipes. Several well-stocked grocery stores line Oak Tree Road. The shelves are filled with some of my favorite things to eat, like basmati rice, which is both fragrant and flavorful. There's a special Indian tradition for basmati rice. 
When a baby is born, the parents will buy large quantities of the rice to serve many years later at the child's wedding. This is possible because basmati rice never spoils. Sweets are a way of life in India, and little India is no different. Here, the name is Sukhadia, reign supreme, for it means sweet maker. My family has been in the business for um, over seven generations uh, back home in India, and um, we are proud to be our sweet makers. My um, father's great grandfather was the official sweet maker for the uh, Nawab of Kembe, which used to be a kingly state. After receiving his master's degree, Philip abandoned thoughts of Wall Street for the art of sweet making, choosing royal recipes handed down for generations over the stock market of bulls and bears. The business continues to be a family enterprise and now includes a new vegetarian restaurant called Gokul. While the food here is superb, the delicious sweets flavored with saffron, cardamom, and coconut remain their hallmark. I couldn't resist trying my favorite treat, jalebi. Mm, it's just oozing with syrup. Yeah. This is, I you know, um, in India people eat this like every morning. This is their uh, first, um, they start the day with this. Huh? It's unbelievable. What a great start that would be. But where do you go from there? It doesn't get better. <laughs> The best place to start our cultural tour of India's rich history is only a half hour away at the Newark Museum, home to a collection of nearly a thousand artifacts. The really impressive pieces are the almost full-size stone sculptures from uh, the earliest period, uh, which would be about 2nd century AD, through the medieval period, uh, 9th, 10th century. We also have a wonderful collection of Indian folk art it's textiles and toys and objects of everyday life from the home. All of the statues are sacred. These magnificent works of art once adorned temples and monasteries destroyed during the Middle Ages. So that was a time when many of these objects became homeless. Both Hindu and Buddhist gods and goddesses can be shown in what we would think of as fantastic ways, uh, with uh, many arms, many heads sometimes, animal heads sometimes. And it's a way of expressing the superhuman aspect of the deities. Vishnu and Shiva are the two most prominent male Hindu deities. Ganesh is one of the sons of Shiva. He is the remover of obstacles from life's journey. Believers pray to Ganesh for success and rub his trunk or stomach for good luck. Durga is Shiva's wife. She is both a ferocious warrior and a magnificent goddess who battled evil demons. And she won. And so there are sculptures that show her at her moment of triumph with uh, sometimes uh, as many as 12 arms holding all of the weapons that had been given to her by the other gods. These ancient gods and goddesses continue to be worshipped today, and so are their many incarnations. This makes Hinduism a very complex religion, but one that continues to play a powerful role in the family, especially during the great festivals of the year.